Right now, you are looking inside the vault at Fort Knox, which holds approximately 4,500 tons of pure gold. Operated by the U.S. Department of the Treasury, this vault is heavily secured and not accessible to the public. Right now, you're watching $600,000 worth of gold being poured. Today, I'm going to take you through the entire process, from mining and discovering raw gold, to melting and refining it, and finally polishing and shaping it into gold bars or coins. Right now, gold is trading at $4,100 an ounce, reaching its highest level in history. This is what the highly secure and top secret weighing and storage of gold bars worth trillions of dollars looks like. New gold is mined every year, roughly 3,500 metric tons annually. So in that sense, more gold is added to the total stock each year. However, due to high demand, this increase is not sufficient. A standard gold bar weighs about 27 pounds, but its value can exceed half a million dollars, depending on the market. Almost 50% of all gold above ground, or about 95,000 metric tons, is owned by private individuals and is typically held in the form of jewelry, bullion, and coins. Gold was created billions of years ago during the explosive deaths of stars and in neutron star collisions, where extreme heat and pressure forged heavy elements. Gold is found in the Earth's crust, usually formed by hydrothermal processes, hot, mineral-rich fluids moving through cracks and solidifying into gold veins. Right now, you are watching gold being mined at an open pit mine in Ghana. Africa is currently one of the largest exporters of gold to the United States. Unlike many metals, gold is rarely found combined with other elements. It often occurs in its pure metallic form, known as native gold. Today, humans extract gold by mining it from open pit or underground mines and refining it through processes such as cyanide leaching, smelting, and electrolysis. After Earth formed, most of its natural gold sank into the planet's core. The gold we mine today, however, largely came later, brought by asteroids during the late heavy bombardment around 4 billion years ago. Gold doesn't corrode, rust, or tarnish, which is why even bars buried for centuries remain shiny and untarnished. Did you know that the average human body contains about 0.2 milligrams of gold, mostly in the blood and brain, making it tiny but real? The process is not that difficult, but it does require a furnace capable of reaching temperatures of around 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit. For gold to be liquid, it must reach a temperature of 1,200 degrees. Nitrogen and borax are added to remove impurities, while sand and soda ash help retain the heat so the gold doesn't cool too quickly. This keeps it liquid and makes pouring easier. Once everything is ready to be poured, you can now see the gold flowing and there are no solids. Unfortunately, 99% of the Earth's gold is in its core, so we need to try to get as much gold as possible from the land around us. In this activity, it is necessary to be prudent, and the worker must have great experience to know how to work with molten gold properly. This casting process can easily go wrong. The facilities where they work are among the most secure in the world. Workers are thoroughly vetted, and movements are monitored by cameras and security personnel. No one handles the bars alone. Every step from casting to weighing to storing is supervised. They wear specialized heat-resistant suits, gloves, and face shields. Even a small mistake could result in severe burns or the loss of enormous value. The heaviest gold bar ever made weighs about 55 pounds. 
and it was cast by Japan's Mitsubishi Materials Corporation in 2005. Even at that weight, the bar isn't massive. Its size is only about 15 inches in each dimension. Last year, China produced the most gold in tons, followed by Russia in second place, Australia in third place, and the United States as the fourth largest gold producer. Producing pure gold is a highly specialized industrial process that requires heavy machinery, controlled chemical reactions, and strict safety protocols. Attempting anything like this at home isn't just impractical, it can be extremely dangerous. The United States has the largest gold reserves in the world, totaling 8,133 tons. Most of this gold is kept in Fort Knox, Kentucky, the Denver Mint, and the West Point Bullion Depository. Fewer than 5% of U.S. gold reserves have ever been physically audited by external parties. This gold brick is almost cooled and can now be worked and polished. To cool it down, it is simply placed in clean, cold water. The gold bar begins to harden quickly, and after about 30 seconds, it becomes quite firm. In this case, this gold factory is trying to achieve 95% purity. They do this by using reagents, so they add sand, borax, sodium carbonate, and nitrate. Together, these substances retain heat, maintain fluidity, and remove impurities. That's why from the top, there's that black slag around the gold brick you see right now. That black is obsidian, and it is desirable to remove it to achieve purer gold. The factory worker places it in a water bath, and within a few minutes, it cools enough to touch. Then the gold brick is taken out and given a thorough clean. Every official bar has stamps showing the refinery, purity, serial number, and sometimes the year minted, which makes each bar uniquely traceable. Gold bars are stamped for several important reasons. Each bar shows which company produced it, ensuring identification of the refinery. Gold ingots from production factories usually come in several standard shapes and forms, such as rectangular bars, cast bars, minted bars, small bullion bars, or coins. The stamp also indicates the gold's purity, usually 99.5% or higher, and the exact weight of the bar. Unique serial numbers make each bar traceable and help prevent fraud. Sometimes the year the bar was minted is also included. These markings ensure authenticity, traceability, and value verification, which are crucial for trading, storing, and auditing gold. Some counterfeiters create fake gold bars by covering tungsten, which has the same density as gold with a layer of real gold. In 2020, more than 80 fake bars were found in Chinese banks. Gold authenticity is checked using X-ray fluorescence, weight and size measurements, and ultrasonic testing. Since about 2010, central banks have been buying gold overall, reversing decades of selling. The main recent buyers are Russia, China, India, Turkey, and Poland. This shift is driven by the desire to diversify away from the US dollar and respond to economic uncertainty. Some countries, such as Russia and China, use gold to bypass sanctions, lessen dependence on the dollar, and create alternative economic systems. Gold is viewed as a safeguard against currency devaluation, inflation, and political instability. When gold is transferred between banks or countries, the process is extremely controlled and discreet. Gold bars worth billions of dollars are stored in bank vaults. Central banks, major commercial banks, and specialized bullion banks maintain highly secure underground vaults for this purpose. Transport is usually carried out by specialized security companies using armored trucks, secure containers, and sometimes even military escorts for large transfers. Air transport is also common for international shipments, with gold shipped as cargo under tight security and insurance. 
Interestingly, much of the time, gold doesn't physically move at all. Instead, ownership is simply transferred on paper between accounts held at the same vault. Physical movement only happens when absolutely necessary, since it's costly, risky, and logistically complex. One gram of gold can be stretched into a wire more than a mile long, or hammered into a sheet thinner than a human hair. Because gold does not oxidize when exposed to air or water, it doesn't rust or tarnish. That's why ancient gold artifacts buried for centuries in tombs or lying underwater in shipwrecks can be recovered looking almost as bright and intact as the day they were made. Some gold mines use special microbes that break down rock and naturally release tiny particles of gold. In a way, these microorganisms digest the minerals around the gold, leaving the metal behind, an actual biological process used in modern mining. If you have any additional questions about the production of gold and gold bars, please feel free to leave them in the comments section.